Hello class and welcome to week two. Uh, this week we're going to be uh, having a lecture on chapter three which is management and diversity and really uh, beginning to understand the importance of having a diverse organization. So let's get started here. Um, of course you can always let me know if you do have any questions. I'm here to help you out. The learning objectives here for this week you're going to be able to by the end of the by the end of this lecture or by the end of reading the chapter, you're going to be able to define uh, diversity, understand the advantages of diversity in organizations, also be aware of the challenges facing managers within a diverse workforce. You're going to be able to understand, understand the strategies for promoting diversity in organizations and you're going to have new insights how managers promote diversity. Now diversity again is extremely important in organizations um, and uh, we really need to in race diversity especially when we are more of a global global um, uh, the world's become a lot smaller right we're a global market now so um, you know we're going to be working with people from everywhere so defining diversity here so characteristics of individuals employed in our firm so these characteristics shape the identities and experience individuals have in our society so um, you know, think to yourself quickly: what are what what's diversity? Does your organization have diversity in within its um, within its um, structure? Um, if not, why? Why not? You know, what are the benefits of diversity? So some social implications of diversity. So we have major groups and minor groups. Um, the major groups here are groups of people who hold most of the decision-making power, control of all of resources and information, and access to rewards. In addition, we have minority groups, and these are groups of people who are assigned to work in positions that do not involve power, resources, acceptance, or social status. Now, together, the two groups form a social system of the organization. All right. So not necessarily, you know, if you if you think of the majority groups, who would those be? And then we would have the minority groups. Who would those be? And uh, just think about how the organizational culture and how the ecosystem of the organization is affected by these two groups. Some advantages to diversity within an organization, and these are very important, especially when you're completing your assignments for this week. We're going to be talking about um, GE Lighting and uh, their different um, uh, ways in which they they have a diverse organization. So again, advantages to a diverse workforce are improved ability to gain and keep market share, cost savings, you're going to be increased productivity a more innovative workforce, minority and women employees who are more motivated, better quality of managers, employees who have internalized the message that different does not mean less than, and a workforce that is more resilient when faced with challenges. So if you look at those advantages, would you say having a terrible organizational culture would, you know, with a non-diverse workforce would be beneficial? Probably not, right? You want to embrace diversity in the workplace. And based on the advantages here, you would have a great organizational culture. People working together, people, you know, innovating together, you know, um, cost savings as well. You know, it's, you know, you're not going to have all those lawsuits on your hands, you know, if, if you do end up um, discriminating, you know, and you want to make sure that you keep market share as well, you know, because people are going to see, you know what, you are a diverse workforce, you have a lot of great ideas, and you are, you, you are growing, right? So you want to make sure um, that we do implement these advantages. Now, diversity does not come without challenges, right? So changing demographics. Um, figure 3.1 here in our textbook, the annual percentage changes in the U.S. population by race. And it's going from 95 to 2050. And you can see that it is color-coded. So who... You know, let's take a look here at 95 to 2000, you know, um, we, uh, the uh, African-American population grew, 
um, American Eskimo grew, Asian Pacific grew, um, here in the U.S. Hispanics grew, and whites grew minimally. Let's jump all the way to 2040, 2050. Okay, African American population is dwindling. American Eskimo is dwindling. Asian Pacific diversity challenges, changing demographics is dwindling. Everything is dwindling here in, you know, it's going down. But if you look at the white, I mean, it's, it's negative, right? So that means that there's going to be more diversity within, within the demographics. Okay. You know, uh, whether everything is declining, but again, we need to understand that and be accepting of all, all cultures. Now, diversity challenges also include multi-generational workforces, okay? So if you look to see, we'll have the millennial born after 1980, the Y generation, what are they, what are they known for? They are known for, uh, you know, technology and, and texting and emailing, you know, and they have their own way of, um, working in, in the, in the organization. They want to grow and be shown how to learn. You know, they want to be shown how to, okay? And that's, that's really what their, their, um, their generation encompasses. They want to be shown how to do it. Um, there's not a lot of being proactive with this generation. Generation X, born between 96, uh, between 65 and 80. The, this generation, um, is really, implementing and really trying to figure out how to work with the millennial generation uh, to show them how because again if you look at gen x they were shown how to work by baby boomers baby boomers are very much you know hierarchical you know um, workplace you know uh, follow the rules you know grow the lat you know head up the ladder of the organization you know and um so we want to make sure, you know, so Gen Xers are kind of stuck in the middle here where we're trying to figure out the best way to work with baby boomers and help them innovate. But also we need to work with millennials to show them how to be proactive, you know, show them how to work. And then we have baby boomers who need to learn how to work with millennials, right? So we have four and actually we have five generations that are going to be jumping into the workforce and everyone needs to kind of work together all right and that's again diversity has their challenges you know the millennial or the 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 generation right before the millennials which is going to be um generation alpha or generation z and they are they've never known a world without ipads smartphones you know most of their communications are um, through text messages, through social platforms, you know, how, how are we going to relate to them? How are we going to change, um, business, you know, business and organizations so that they understand and can relate to that type of work? And then, of course, we have the si a silent greatest generation. Um, again, you know, uh, I would say a majority of these are retired already but there are some still in the workforce okay so we got to understand how to work with them as well diversity again ethnocentrism and what this is is what belief in one's group culture country and customs are far superior than those of other groups is there ethnocentrism that that's here in the united states I think there are, I think there is, you know, again, a lot of people will look down, you know, in, um, uh, there's a lot of racism down South, you know, and a lot of people will look down on the Hispanic population and they will think that, you know, the white population is better than the Hispanic population. Um, and so the Hispanic population is, you know, they go and do, you know, uh, the jobs that the white people don't want to do. And, um, and that's okay. You know, it, it's, you know, if that's something that, the, you know, the Hispanics would like to do, a lot of them, you know, you got to remember, a lot of them are, you know, multicultural. A lot of Hispanics can speak two to three languages. How many can you speak as an American, right? Most Americans only speak one, and they don't do that very well, English, right? Um, 
But again, ethnocentrism can cause prejudice, stereotypes, discrimination, and tokenism. And we want to make sure that we are not, we are not having that issue within our team or within our organization. Okay. Just because, you know, someone might be Asian does not mean that they're good at math. All right. The stereotype. All right. Just because, you know, uh, uh, well, we're not going to get into that because it can get <laughs> it can get dicey, but you get the idea, okay? Um, negative dynamics in specific groups. Again, diversity challenges with women, gender roles, especially today. We have women, we have transgenders, and we have men. Um, and there's a lot of issues with that today. Um, we have glass ceilings, and this is not just for women, it's also for men and also transgenders and also for um, uh, those of other ethnicities, okay? Sexual harassment, um, minority groups, um, uh, you know, uh, when 9-11 hit, the minority groups, um, the Ar Ar Arabs and the, you know, the um, Iraqis and, you know, um, Middle Eastern, my us, you know, I'm not, um, Middle Eastern, um, dissent, okay, you know, they all got, you know, people look down on them, you know, because of what some terrorist group did. And these people are completely, they're, they're completely 100% American. They do great work. You know, there's nothing wrong with them. You know, they condone the actions of the terrorist group as well, but still people look down on them. All their workers, and workers with disability. Now, there's also, if you think about the Civil Rights Act of 1965, a lot of this is protected. Okay, so if you are discriminated against, you can provide, there can be lawsuits, okay, that will negatively impact your organization in a ser serious way and, and can increase costs as opposed to reduce costs. Now, strategies for promoting diversity in organizations. So they had the Hudson Institute strategies. And uh, what these do here is they st simulate balanced world growth. They accelerate productivity increases in service industries. Maintain dynamism for aging workforce. Recon reconcile conflicting needs of women, work, and families. Fully integrate African American and Hispanic workers. Improve education and skills for all workers. Then we have the laws associated with strategies. We have the EEOC. We also have affirmative action and reverse discrimination. EEOC is the federal agency enforcing discrimination and employment laws, regulating recruiting and other management practices. Again, you cannot discriminate as a manager, as a human resources official. Affirmative action eliminates barriers, increases opportunities for underutilized and or disadvantaged individuals. And then reverse discrimination. A lot of people don't think that happens, but it does happen quite often. Um, and we do see a lot of that in the news as well. The organizational commitment continuum here. We have the broad-based diversity efforts that are going to be based on effective implementation and effective uh, affirmative action and EEOC policy. So you want to make sure that you do have that commitment to your organization in order to put forth the correct, put forth the the right program, the right strategies. Um, organized wide organization-wide assessment and management top-down commitment to diversity. If your organization is not committed to diversity, if your leadership is not committed to diversity, you're not going to have a diverse workforce. Um, managerial commitment tied to organizational rewards and ongoing processes of organization's assessment and programs for the purpose of creating an organizational climate that is inclusive and supportive of diverse groups. Diversity efforts based on Okay. In effective implementation of affirmative action and EEOC policies. Again, ongoing education and training programs. Um, a lot of um, organizations are now promoting diversity training programs as a requirement to be taken once a year. 
um, managerial commitment tied to organizational rewards, and minimum attention directed towards cultivating an exclusive support organizational climate. Now, diversity efforts are going to be based on narrowly defined affirmative action EEOC policies combined with one-shot education and our training programs. And consistent marg managerial commitment and no attention directed towards the organizational climate. That's, that's not a good one, right? And then again here, diversity efforts are going to be based on compliance with the enforcement of affirmative action uh, policies, but there's not going to be uh, organizational support with respect to education and training and an inconsistent or poor managerial commitment. So it's kind of this last one, our organizations have kind of phone it in. Um, you know, they, they do the minimum of the requirements, but then um, that's about it on what they do. And you're going to have the organizations here that are compliance with affirmative action EEOC policies, but their inconsistent enforcement and implementation and support of policies not rewarded. Organization relies on individual managers' interest or commitment. Um, and then lastly, you have organizations that do not have compliance or affirmative action EEOC. So there's a lot of different uh, diversity um, efforts going on in organizations, you know, reflect on what your organization does. And then, so we have pluralism. And what is this? This is, um, the examples would be the golden rule approach. Okay, do unto others as you would have done unto you. Um, assimilation approach, you know, a, get the diversity, get them moved in, and get them assimilated into the organization as quickly as possible. Um, so there can't be any concerns. Right, writing the wrongs approach, culture-specific approach, and multicultural approach. So how can managers promote diversity? And these are looking at the four functions of management. And here we have planning. So diversity training programs and goals. We can implement diversity training. Um, and in just a moment, we're going to go through some themes that we can train on. Organizing, organizing, and this would be recruiting, hiring, retaining diverse pool of employees. Again, looking at strategic staffing, um, making sure that we're meeting the needs of the organization, but we are, of course, hiring and retaining diverse pool. Um, influencing, encouraging and supporting diverse work environments, and last is controlling, which is evaluating diversity efforts to see if it's working. If we are not evaluating, then that basically says that we are just phoning it in. We need to know if we are a diverse organization. Um, a lot of organizations will publish this as well um, to let the world know or who's interested that they are a diverse organization. If not, they will fix it really quickly. Some diversity training themes. Um, these are some ideas, you know, behavioral awareness, acknowledgement of bias and stereotypes, job, focus on job performance, avoidance of assumptions, modify a policy and procedure manuals. Okay. And then here's the steps in managing a diverse workforce. Um, Donaldson scale four stage model. You can look at this in the textbook. It's unconscious incompetence, conscious incompetence, consciously competent, and unconscious competence. All right. So again, let me know if you do have any questions. We wanted to go through this. Diversity is an extremely important topic in organizations. Um, but also please be sure that you are reading the text. Um, and uh, providing the examples. Um, like I said, we're going to be having an assignment in this. I'm um, looking at GE Lighting, so um, understanding this is extremely important. Let me know if you have any questions. Have a great week.